A paved stone wall project will enhance the beauty of any lawn, landscape, or garden. Paved stone wall stones come in a number of colors, shapes, and textures, and can be used to build a retaining wall, section off planter beds, create a decorative ring around your favorite tree, add a terrace to your garden, or reclaim space from a sloping section of your yard. Before you begin, you will need to determine how many courses or layers of wall stone you'll need by estimating the approximate size of the wall you want to build. Your local paved stone authorized distributor will be happy to help you with this. Next, gather the following tools, equipment, and materials. Gloves and safety glasses, shovel, tape measure, mini sledgehammer, four inch chisel, carpenter's level, torpedo level, nylon mason string, pencil, string level, stakes, hand tamp, wheelbarrow, and a guillotine splitter. You will also need paved stone paver sand for a base, and for some projects, paved stone all-purpose stone for backfill. Your local paved stone authorized distributor will be happy to recommend a paver base or sand suitable for your project, as well as help you determine how much you'll need. There are four basic steps for installing a wall project using paved stone wall stones. Preparing the site, preparing the base, laying the stones, and cutting the stones. There are many choices available today in wall colors, textures, and shapes. The stones we will use in this demonstration are paved stones, Anchor Windsor stones. Start by marking the ground area where you want to build your wall with spray paint. Then place tall stakes along the paint line as shown. Next, run a string between the stakes at the height you want your wall to reach. Make sure the string is level by using your string level. Since the wall stones are four inches in height, you will need to measure down the stakes at four inch increments, marking each increment with a pencil. Keep in mind that for tall walls, walls requiring more than three courses or layers of wall stones, you must bury the first course fully. Small walls, walls three courses or less, require that you only partially bury the first course at least two to three inches into the ground. The next step is to excavate the ground and install the base where you will set the first course of wall stones. How deep and thick your base needs to be depends on your wall height. For small walls, which are three courses or less of four inch wall stones, dig out the trench three inches deep. For tall walls that are four to seven courses high of four inch wall stones, the trench must be eight inches deep. Both wall heights require a trench that is 12 inches wide. After digging, tamp down the floor of the trench with either a hand tamp or a compactor. Now you are ready to put in the base. For a small wall, all you need for a sufficient base is one inch of coarse sand. Place sand in the trench and then level the sand by smoothing it out as shown. Tall walls need a rigid base four inches thick. For a rigid base, use paved stone paper base or prepare a six to one mixture of dry sand and Portland cement. That is, six shovelfuls of sand for every one shovelful of Portland cement and make sure it is well blended. Be sure to keep this mixture dry as it will set if it gets wet. Whichever you use, fill the length of the trench to a depth of four inches. Use a two by four to smooth out the base material and make sure it is level throughout in both directions. Now, readjust the string height on your stakes by moving them down to the top of your first wall level. You are now ready to start laying the wall stones. If your wall is set on ground that rises or slopes, begin at the lowest point. Now, set the stones in the base side by side, leveling each stone in both directions with a torpedo level as you go. Once the base course is placed, 
set the next course by placing each stone in a staggered pattern, making sure that each stone bridges the two stones below it so that the joints do not line up. As you place a stone on top of a course, pull it forward to secure it in place. When building your wall, you may need to lay partial stones to complete a course. If you need to cut stones to partial lengths, mark the length you need on the stone, be sure to wear protective eyewear, and then use the mini sledgehammer and four inch chisel to score the length you need on all sides of the stone. If you need stones to be split in half, you'll find several stones on each pallet that have grooves down the center of the back to make splitting easier. Then, on a sidewalk or a hard surface, pound the score line with a mini sledgehammer and chisel until it breaks. You can also use a guillotine splitter. A guillotine splitter is both quick and easy and makes accurate, clean cuts. To finish out your project, backfill the wall with native soil and compact in four inch increments. For small walls, just use the soil you excavated from the trench. For tall walls, use a clean granular backfill like fine gravel or pea gravel at a thickness of about six inches to assist in draining. Fine soils may wash through the joints from time to time. To prevent this, install a weed block or landscape filter fabric by rolling it out along the back of the wall before you backfill. Lay the top of the roll halfway over the last row of stones and set the top layer on the wall. This will hold the fabric in place. We also highly recommend that you glue the top stone or a capstone to the row beneath with concrete adhesive from the paint department to make the wall system more secure. Congratulations! You just completed a valuable landscape improvement to your home. Now you can step back and enjoy your accomplishment with the personal satisfaction of having created a beautiful outdoor environment that is uniquely yours, easy to maintain, and one that you, your family and friends will enjoy for years to come.